Hi, I'm Heather and welcome to Life Zone with Manipal Hospitals. Today we're going to be talking about a condition that affects almost 10 million women worldwide. That's one in 10 women that suffer from hormonal and metabolism problems that can affect their overall health and appearance. Called polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, this is a condition that can append not just your menstrual cycle, but your entire life as well. Now, although PCOS was first discovered and diagnosed way back in 1935, even today, there is a general lack of awareness about this condition, resulting in it going undetected for years. Now, of course, most women find out they have PCOS only when they are unable to conceive. But PCOS can set in at any time between the ages of 15 and 44. To tell us more about this today, we have with us Dr. Shivani Jain, a consultant in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Manipal Hospitals, Goa. She specializes in antenatal care and infertility. Hello, doctor. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. So let's start with the most obvious question. What exactly is PCOS? Okay, so PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. Basically, it is an endocrinal problem, means it's a hormonal problem. Normally, a woman ovulates once every month. Yes. In PCOS, due to some hormonal issues, the woman does not ovulate. And that causes either delayed ovulation or no ovulation at, at all. all. Since there is no ovulation, the woman does not have regular periods because okay. periods come once the egg is uh, uh, ruptured. So she does not, she has delayed periods and also eventually she has problem in conceiving because she is not ovulating. Now along with these problems, PCOS also carries with it a lot of other problems which is due to insulin resistance. Okay. So that is why it is a syndrome. So that is what PCOS is. So are polycystic ovaries and polycystic ovarian syndrome the same thing? No. Uh, a lot of patients feel very scared when they hear the term polycystic ovaries. They think that their ovaries have multiple cysts, which may be tumor, which may be cancerous. Yes. Actually, this is a misnomer in the sense this name is a wrongly given name. Okay. The eggs do not rupture. So they form small, small, small follicles within the ovary, which gives an appearance as if there are multiple cysts, cysts in the ovary. So that is why it is called a polycystic ovarian syndrome. There is no true cyst per se. Okay. And also young women for the first 10 years when they start having their menstrual cycles, they have a lot of uh, egg re reserve of these follicles. So their ovaries naturally show a polycystic appearance. Okay. So many a times on ultrasound, we end up saying that the ovaries are polycystic. But uh, in order to have this polycystic ovarian syndrome or disease, a girl should have two out of the three criteria. So okay. these three include one is if on ultrasound, there are this polycystic appearance. Second, if the woman is having irregular periods, wherein she is having less than eight periods in a, in year, a year or her periods are uh, prolonging more than 45 days for more like not just once or twice a the year, duration more between. frequency, yes. And the third is that if she has features of testosterone excess, like excess of facial hair, uh, body hair, acne, uh, male pattern of balding. Okay. So these are the three criteria. If a woman has two out of these three, only then she is said to have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So right. just by itself having polycystic ovaries on ultrasound does Doesn't not mean make that you, you have, have a poly PCOS. Yes. Okay. So doctor, do we know what causes PCOS? Um, we do not know what cause exactly causes PCOS, but we know that it is linked to insulin resistance which is the same thing which leads to diabetes. So at the level of the cells, once there is insulin resistance, this resistance can be hereditary. Okay. Many girls have a history of PCOS in the family or diabetes in the family. It can be hereditary, but it is not always so. 
it can be related to weight gain sedentary la lifestyle lack of exercise nutritional habits so all these eventually lead the body to have resistance to insulin and then this hormonal imbalance occurs, occurs. So, doctor, you said now that, you know, there are three things to look out for, which is your excess body hair and uh, irregular periods. Now, do all women with PCOS suffer from the same symptoms? Do we see, is there a consistency as in do we see all of these things in all women that suffer from the syndrome? Uh, no. Unfortunately, uh, this disease has a spectrum and these two features that is excess of testosterone features due to excess of testosterone and the features of irregular periods these can be caused due to other issues as well okay like thyroid uh, hormone issues or other uh, uh, hormonal issues then uh, any tumors which are secreting androgens so what ends up is that we have a spectrum and women even women with pcos might not be having uh, features of uh, excess of testosterone. They might just be having irregular the cycles other two. and the uh, ultrasound finding. So what happens, there is a lot of hype in the media, in the social media and women get very scared because True. they think it is directly affecting their uh, femininity or uh, their uh, fertility. Mm. Uh, it's not so. It's a broad spectrum and all women may need not exhibit all the features of PCOS. So basically what you're trying to say is that to diagnose PCOS, you need to, uh, of the, from this broad, broad spectrum that you just spoke about, yeah. you need to find two of the three conditions. Yes. But doctor, how would a patient know, you know, to approach, say, to get diagnosed for the syndrome? Okay. This is a, a very uh, important question because many teenage girls when they start the menstrual cycles for first two three years their cycles tend to be irregular that's a normal finding but okay. nowadays again because of uh, uh, half cooked knowledge many uh, parents get tensed girls get tensed and the internet and they come and then they start taking hormonal therapy for the same thing so one message is that for the first two years if a girl is getting irregular periods that is okay we can keep a watchful uh, uh, this thing expecting Track, management yes. then the other thing is that uh, if a woman continues to have irregular periods or no periods at all then she should meet her gynecologist and uh, also if someone is uh, having features of uh, excess of body hair, excess of facial hair or uh, features like there are voice changes, there are male type of voice yes. changes. So all these you should seek first the help of a gynecologist or even an endocrinologist for that matter. Uh, so then what would the line of treatment be? So uh, PCOS because there is this hormonal problem which is at the core of it, so we cannot completely treat the hormonal problem. So the therapies are directed at either improving the body's reaction to insulin, that is decreasing the insulin resistance. resistance. If we are able to decrease the insulin resistance, we would be able to tackle the problem uh, at its base level. Okay. So that is why women with PCOS, they are said to do some exercise. This not only helps in lowering insulin resistance, this is also beneficial in the long term and yes. uh, sometimes they start ovulating like even if a woman who is overweight she reduces 5 to 10 percent of her body weight many up to 80 percent women can resume their ovulatory cycles okay so good diet exercise which is regular exercise so uh, the suggested exercise regime is like 30 minutes of brisk walking um, for at least five days a week good food habits and some calm uh, calming exercises like yoga or meditation. meditation because even stress leads to release of steroids and steroids are again hormones so women who are under constant stress mm. they also tend to have irregular periods and PCOS is exacerbated so these are the things which we can do at the lifestyle level okay then we do have some medicines which are non-hormonal which are now being widely available in the market which act at the cell level to increase the cell's 
uh, action towards insulin. So okay. these are our second line of treatment. Then if a woman has uh, pre-diabetes or diabetes, that is her blood sugar levels are also raised mm -hmm. because of this problem, then the metformin, which is a sugar stabilizing drug, okay. this has been shown to help. And finally, if we want to tackle the problem of periods, we do have very good hormonal uh, preparations available with which if a woman, she is not having at least eight cycles a year, we mm -hmm. would like her to have at least six to eight cycles a year okay. to avoid the harmful effects of the hormonal imbalance. So, uh, doctor, now as we all know, if you have, uh, you know, irregular menstrual cycles, you have trouble conceiving. So, what uh, would a woman with PCOS do in such a con uh, in such a uh, scenario? Yes, uh, many women are very scared when they enter the clinic uh, that they are diagnosed with PCOS before, and now they want to conceive. So, PCOS, uh, fortunately, the problem in PCOS is that the eggs are there. It is just that they are not ovulating. So, okay. uh, one is that with the lifestyle interventions which I mentioned before, mm -hmm. a woman might start ovulating. Secondly, a woman who is having delayed but regular cycles, like she is having a period once in 45 or once in 40 days, okay. she might conceive on her own. So, in fact, 40 to 50 percent of women with PCOS can conceive without any medical intervention. Okay. And then the next issue is that if she is not conceiving, we do give her uh, drugs which are ovulation induction drugs, which cause the ovulation to happen. So once the ovulation is happening, we have overcome the barrier to getting pregnant. And these ovulation induction drugs, when they are taken properly, um, over a period of four to six months, they have a success rate of up to 80% also, 60 to okay. 80%. So that is very good for patients with PCOS. And finally, we do have the option of IVF also, if the ovulation induction drugs fail. Yes. So fertility issue can be tackled. Women with PCOS who are not able to conceive should meet their gynecologist or an infertility specialist, not that they would really help them. So doctor, you also said that, uh, you know, uh, if there is somebody in the family that suffers from PCOS, then chances of one suffering from the same increase. How uh, how would this, uh, what I'm uh, trying to say is how much, you know, if, if say my mom has it or my aunt has it, what are my chances of, of suffering from the same? Yeah, so the issue is that uh, the incidence of hereditary PCOS, we haven't been able to pinpoint exactly because it is a multifactorial disease. Okay. It is not just genetic, it is also related to your environment and uh, so direct genetic uh, link up would not be uh, like it would be around 20-25 percent. The rest of it would you say it's a lifestyle? It's a lifestyle related or other things which we have not yet been able to pinpoint like it's like women who have PCOS also have a tendency to develop diabetes later on in life, hypertension later on in life, okay. cardiovascular disease later on in life but these all are preventable to a major extent if they are able to in a, you know modify their mm -hmm. lifestyle so it's very difficult to pinpoint the exact reason or the exact risk of PCOS in an individual. Considering the high numbers that we're seeing now is PCOS on the rise among Indian women? PCOS is on a rise among Indian urban women maybe or uh, you know as we are becoming more sedentary and our uh, nutritional habits are changing uh, our exercise, we are doing less and less of physical activities. So definitely the issues of menstrual irregularities and PCOS are increasing, more so in uh, cities and towns rather than villages, okay. uh, but it is increasing. But uh, the increase seems to be more due to lifestyle rather than any other factor. Rather than, rather than outside. Outside in New Zealand. So now, doctor, uh, PCOS can set in at any time, you said, in childbearing years. Yeah. Now, what happens after that? So, uh, PCOS is a hormonal problem. Once a woman achieves menopause, 
So then in uh, even in uh, women who don't have PCOS after menopause ovulation stops. Yes. So it is not going to cause a problem later on. But uh, women with PCOS uh, the hormonal alteration is such that they have an excess of estrogen in their cycles. And this excess of estrogen is not counter checked by progesterone. These are the two hormones. Okay. So this excess of estrogen uh, can predispose to having uterine and uh, uterine cancers later on. Uh, so what we need to be aware of is that in once a woman has achieved menopause, in normal women also, if she experiences any abnormal bleeding post menopause, mm -hmm. she should consult a doctor immediately. Otherwise, okay. post menopause, PCOS will not cause much of a problem to a woman. But uh, would these women need be at a higher risk, as you said, for uterine cancer? So would yes. screening be, you know, uh, would they need to be screened more often? There have been a lot of studies on the same. But the benefit of screening, uh, because the modalities which we have for screening are not very efficient for detecting uterine cancer. In the sense, the amount of cost does not uh, 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 does not uh, help with the benefit. It is not correlating with the benefit. So regular screening, they should go for their regular annual checkups to their uh, doctors. Mm. But uh, uh, we cannot do any specific screening for uterine cancer. But yes, the best thing about uterine cancer is that it generally presents itself as an abnormal bleeding at a very early stage. Okay. So if after menopause any woman is having bleeding, she should meet a doctor and get it checked out get as soon as possible. Yes. Now, uh, doctor, like you said, there are several health complications related to PCOS. Uh, does it put at, uh, does it put one at risk of other long term diseases? Um, we need to understand that PCOS is due to insulin resistance. So all the lifestyle disorders such as obesity, uh, obesity, hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disorders, uh, uncontrolled uh, hormonal imbalance is related to these things. So women with PCOS should get their annual uh, uh, blood sugars tested, annual lipid profile tested and they should get also their thyroid checked because there is some uh, menstrual irregularity. So more often than not, sometimes there are thyroid problems which are causing the menstrual irregular ir irregularities. Apart from these lifestyle disorders, as I already mentioned, due to excess of uh, hormone, estrogen, one type of hormone, mm. unchecked, they are uh, at a higher risk of uh, uterine cancer. But um, uh, there is no proper screening for that. Again, how we prevent is, it is by ensuring that a woman has around 6 to 8 uh, cycles. Cy cycles in a year. So that there is that uh, when a m woman has a period, it is due to withdrawal of estrogen and progesterone. So progesterone is there in the body and that much progesterone is okay to have a protective effect on the uterus. Doctor, would it be essential uh, to say visit your doctor immediately or is there anything that women can do on their own to you know, ease the symptoms of PCOS? Uh, again, uh, there are two main issues which concern women when it comes to PCOS. One is the period irregularity. One is the other features like acne and excess of facial hair and uh, infertility. So uh, what everything responds to very nicely is some physical activity. Even if one is not overweight, physical activity goes a long way in lowering the uh, resistance to insulin. So okay. a good lifestyle which should include a healthy diet, some physical activity and uh, as I said, we need to eliminate stress as much as possible from our daily lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So these three things are very, very important. What can be the other causes of an irregular menstrual cycle? Um, uh, menstrual cycle is closely regulated, is actually just because of hormones. So there are a lot of factors which can lead to irregular menstrual cycles and here I'm limiting myself to delayed menstrual cycles because okay. that is how PCOS presents. So there can be an issue with the central nervous system which could be due to simple things like being underweight, okay. not uh, uh, being malnourished, uh, being uh, 
or uh, any head injury one has had some tumors in the brain so okay. often tumors in the brain are sometimes diagnosed because a woman presents with irregular cycles oh is it then there can be issues with hormones such as thyroid hormones prolactin hormone sometimes very rarely the woman's ovary is not working that might be because of certain genetic conditions that can be because of some viral infections in childhood that can be because of receiving radiotherapy okay. or chemotherapy in the past so these these are many issues which can lead to delayed cycles and these have to be evaluated before we think that before you you have to rule all of these out before yes. you uh, assume that it is yes. pcos yes uh, doctor what would the, you know how what are the tests that are involved in in diagnosing and in treatment so for pcos uh we have first we do have an ultrasound which will give us the picture of the ovaries which is polycystic appearance then we do some hormonal tests okay. we check for certain hormones like fsh and lh the ratio of which is altered in pcos and which also help to eliminate other causes of irregular cycles like thyroid and prolactin levels okay if a woman is showing features of androgen or testosterone excess then we test for the blood levels of serum testosterone and other testosterones apart from this we do a basic sugar profile because as i said uh, uncontrolled uh, sugar levels and insulin resistance are closely related with pcos we check the serum insulin levels we do a basic lipid profile of the patient so these are some basic tests which we do when we have to manage or start the evaluation of pcos all of these are non invasive just blood tests yeah they are blood tests and they are ultrasound so they are all non invasive women get very scared when they first hear the word pcos or when they have irregular cycles for the first time even they self diagnose themselves as pcos and they get very very scared because the name is scary True. but i want to say that it is important to understand why the disease happens and then just work on certain factors for different women different approaches work but the good thing is that we have very good medicine if the problem is insulin resistance we have very good medicine if the problem is infertility okay. and also there are so many women and in fact there are so many support groups which focus on lifestyle interventions and they have shown excellent results so there is no need to be scared when one hears the word pcos consult your gynecologist consult your endocrinologist and that is what is required okay so as dr shivani just told us although pcos has no cure it can certainly be managed it can certainly be treated there is no reason to be afraid all that we need to do if we are going to come about with a holistic solution to the problem is three things healthy ex healthy eating regular exercise and increased awareness thank you so much doctor for joining us today thank you and thank you for tuning in this is heather saying bye for now keep watching prudent media